Scary Mysteries Twisted News, Oldest Shark Attack Victim, and Stevie Crawford. Terrifying cases of true crime and strange events. Every week, Twisted News dives into two mysterious and scary cases currently happening in our world. This week, we'll tackle the terrifying case of the oldest shark attack ever, as well as the story of the dead body found in 1963 in an Oregon Creek. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted News. Number 1. Oldest Known Shark Attack on Humans Discovered Despite what the newspapers and movies want us to believe, shark attacks are pretty rare. In fact, it's more common to die or at least get injured from fireworks. What's even more surprising is that you're more likely to die from taking a selfie than actually being eaten by a shark. And yet, the fear bestowed upon these apex predators goes a long way back, even before written history. More than a couple of thousand years ago, a man believed to be a fisherman went out to sea and there met a bitter fate. This discovery was made by a couple of researchers from University of Oxford. J. Alyssa White and Rick J. Schulting were actually investigating evidence of warfare among the prehistoric hunter-gatherer societies in Japan. From the heap of evidence, there they came across the remains of a man whose radiocarbon dating analysis indicated him to have lived around 3,000 years ago and his hand and right leg were missing. What captured their attention were his bones, which were riddled with at least 700 incision marks. Upon closer examination, they found its characteristics different from those usually found in victims of war or even murder. An investigation was made and based on the results, they were able to rule out the possibility of human conflict as the cause of the person's demise. They also rejected the possibility that the attack was carried out by terrestrial predators, such as wolves or tigers. Techniques and forensic investigation were also employed in the process. They found the incised sharp edge markings on the bones inconsistent with the kinds of marks that would be left by the stone tools most likely used during the era. The mystery persisted for quite some time, but as it turns out, it wasn't only White and Schulting who were baffled by such an anomaly. The skeleton, which was simply given the name Number 24, was discovered in 1969 from the Sukumo Shell Mound in Okayama Prefecture, Japan. Several studies were made specifically on the circumstances surrounding this person's demise, but just like the two researchers, no one knew the exact cause of such gruesome lesions. Running out of theories, White and Schulting decided to try their luck on shark attacks. They consulted a shark expert from the Florida Program for Shark Research to investigate a handful of such cases that happened in ancient times. It didn't take long for them to realize that this was exactly the answer they had long been searching for. They couldn't have been more ecstatic to find all the details concurring with their initial assessment. With the help of an international team, the researchers began their work in reconstructing the circumstances surrounding what is now known as the most ancient shark attack ever. Their analysis led them to believe that the man had died between 1370 and 1010 BC. Meanwhile, the dispersion of wound marks all over his body strongly suggested that Sukumo No. 24 might still have been alive and fighting for his life during the attack. The missing left hand and right leg were indicative that the shark sheared off his limbs. Based on the character of the tooth marks, the researchers surmised that the shark species responsible for the attack could either be a tiger shark or a great white. White and Schulting's observations were later published in the paper submitted in the Journal of Archaeological Science Reports. The paper further revealed why number 24 encountered the sea predator. They found that the Neolithic people of Jomon, Japan, 
have been hunting large fish, such as sharks, not solely for subsistence, but also as trophy. Number 24, according to the paper, may have been targeting sharks, although there's also a possibility that he unintentionally lured the animal to the bait that he had set for other large fish. Nature can truly be cruel, though predators like sharks rarely attack humans for no reason. When they do, the extent of their brutality surely is frightening, and it echoes well throughout time. Number two, dead body found in 1963 in an Oregon Creek. This terrifying story began on July 11, 1963, when a man went fishing at the pristine waters of Keene Creek Reservoir. All of a sudden, his fishing line caught what appeared to be a bundle of blankets. Curiosity prompted the local man to grab the object and then inspect what was inside. Pure terror overcame him, and when he finally unraveled the wrapping, he saw the fully clothed body of a lifeless child. Police were immediately called to investigate the incident, and initial findings indicated that someone had bound the boy's body with a wire and placed a weight on it to sink it underwater. The discovery shocked everyone in the community and later the entire country. The media called it the case of the boy in the bundle. No one knew the identity of the poor child and the case remains unsolved up until today. And it has become Oregon's oldest unidentified missing persons case. Aside from the lack of leads, there was another big reason why the public and even law enforcement had lost track of the case. And that was because of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. In November of 1963, the 35th president of the United States was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, while riding in a presidential motorcade. The entire country was shocked over the news and had since been engrossed over the incident. And this left other cases to be tossed in the back seat. Meanwhile, the so-called Keen Creek Baby Doe was laid to rest at Medford's Hillside Cemetery. A headstone was placed, which simply reads, Baby Doe, known only to God. Then came 2007, more than 40 years since the case had gone cold, and a new incoming officer in the Jackson County Sheriff's Office was clearing his predecessor's files. He came across a paper box, which had the label, Old Sheriff's Cases. Sifting through it, he stumbled upon the missing persons report of the boy in the bundle. Considering how old it already was, the new chief decided to shift his focus from finding who's at fault to actually just knowing the name of the young John Doe. His timing couldn't have been more perfect because around that time, there had been a huge development in forensic DNA research techniques. The following year, in 2008, the sheriff's office announced that they had begun their work on identifying the victim. In a press release, they explained that they had exhumed the boy's body from his resting place for them to extract samples from his femur. After gathering evidence, they submitted the data on the country's combined DNA index system. Despite returning zero matches, though, authorities continued to pursue their efforts. Meanwhile, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released a composite image of the Keen Creek boy with the hope that this could help generate new leads for the police. Just recently, the sheriff's office received an intriguing tip through a private message on Facebook. Unfortunately, the office couldn't divulge the exact details, but regardless, it was a very welcoming development. The local law enforcement unit handling the case submitted the boy's DNA profile to a private genetic genealogy research institute. It was processed using phenotyping, which further allows investigators to create a much larger family tree to match with. And indeed, a match was made to two potential siblings. One of them was a half-brother who was living in Ohio. This half-brother, whom Baby Doe shared his mother with, confided to the police that he had known a younger brother with Down syndrome. 
and he had disappeared when they were still living in New Mexico. Following up on this, detectives were able to procure a document that would finally close the 58-year-old cold case. In this birth certificate, it was found that the Keene Creek baby doe was actually Stevie Crawford, born October 2, 1960, and he would have been 60 years old in 2021. Soon enough, some surprising, if not horrifying, details came pouring in. In a series of interviews, nearby relatives revealed that long ago, Crawford's mother told their family that she'd be going for a trip together with what was then her two-year-old baby. When she came back, she was asked about her son. She simply replied that he was already taken care of. Crawford's mother has since passed away. And though there's no clear evidence to support the theory that he was killed, the fact that he was found in such a pitiful circumstance strongly suggests that there could be foul play involved. Baby Crawford's family and relatives were nonetheless relieved and at the same time saddened to have finally learned of his fate. The case is now closed, but there are still some questions that continue to linger in everyone's mind. What actually happened that led to the tragic discovery at Keen Creek Reservoir? Would it be right to think that Crawford's mother had something to do with his untimely demise? And if there was, what well, could have driven the woman to commit such a terrible act against her own blood? So there were two of the most mysterious and intriguing stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted News is always sure to show you why. If you guys like this video, then subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because every week we have three new videos coming out for you guys to check out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.